<laughs> okay, so with this one, this is how your thought process should go. So you can remember it for the ACT. You should say, okay, it wants the area of that piece. Well, area of a full circle is pi r squared. But we don't want the full circle. We only want that section out of 360's area. Do you see how that works? It's that easy. I want that section out of 360's area. So then you would have to remember, though, if this is a degree measure, then this needs to be in degrees. If not, you would have to use that other formula, the conversion where the pi's are already divided out, or you could convert it back. So anyways, you would do 120 divided by 360 times by pi, then 5 um, centimeters squared. I want the mathematician answer and the engineering answer. So what would a mathematician write? 25 pi thirds, and that would be square centimeters. And they write it like this, centimeter squared. Like literally a square centimeter. Does that make sense, everyone? Then a math, uh, sorry, a mathematician would be happy with that answer, and an, an engineer would want about exactly how many centimeters? Thank you. 26.12 square centimeters, roughly. Okay, all good with that. So we all get it right. Oh, it's one eight. Oh, 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 sorry. I was probably just kind of converting two things in my head. Perfect. Awesome. Let's go on. So we're starting the lesson right away because I want to give you time in class to work. <clears throat> so we're going to be looking at the unit circle. So I do want to remind you of the equation of just circles in general. So a circle in general has this form. X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals the radius squared. So right here, what I've literally drawn is just a circle, and notice the center is at zero, zero. So, um, and then look, our radius is one. Is everybody seeing it? So that would be this equation right here, x squared plus y squared equals one. Well, this is the equation that creates the unit circle. So what I want you to do is picture us looking at this, zooming in, zooming in, zooming in. Now we're looking at it up close. Does that make sense? We just zoomed in up close. Now what I want you to picture is me taking this number line, guys, and just wrapping it around this unit circle. Do you see what I'm saying? Just wrapping it around the unit circle, the x values, wrapping it around. And then I'm going to take these negatives, and I'm going to wrap them around the unit circle. So we're just looking at around here is what's considered the real number line, where this would be positive numbers this way and negative numbers this way. Yes. Right, it needs to be fixed. Good point. So everybody, if we go over here, this would be point over one up zero, correct? Over zero up one, over negative one up zero, and then this is over zero down one. So this should be zero, negative one. So we have these x, y points where the real number line is just wrapped around. <clears throat> so now, a couple things to note. As the real number line is wrapped around the unit circle, each real number will correspond to some x, y point. So do you see how I'm starting here at zero, and I scroll up, scroll up, boom, there's some x, y point, everybody, on an x, y chart here. Okay, um, now also, corresponding to that x, y point is a central angle theta. So this angle opens up to this boom point, this x, y point. So this theta corresponds to this x, y point and this arc. Is everybody good with that? Okay, so here are the six trig functions, and I'm going to show you where they come from in just a second, so start writing them down. So if we have a bunch of x, y points on a unit circle, this will always hold true. Now the unit circle has a radius of one, keep in mind, so these six things will always be true on the unit circle. Our sine of angle theta, so we're going to have x, y points. Our sine at the central angle that we've opened up to will always be our y value and our x, y points. The cosine at that angle will always be the x coordinate on our x, y point. Our tangent will always be sine over cosine, or same thing as y over x. I will explain why in just a second. Then cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so if this is y over 1, then cosecant would be 1 over y. And secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so this would be 1 over x. And then cotangent the reciprocal of tangent, so we would have x over y. 
This will always be true for the unit circle. So I just said here is the unit circle here. We've um, drawn this in, but this should be over zero down one. Just ignore that. Okay, so I am starting here at zero and I'm tracing around and boom, I've hit this point. Couple of things we know. We have an x, y point right here. So think about it. This distance would be x in distance and then this distance would be y in distance. Does everybody see? Well, also because of our unit circle being radius of one, then that means our hypotenuse would be, a ra uh, we have a radius of one, our hypotenuse would be one. So I have a right triangle here. Now, if you think back to right triangle trigonometry, which you learned in secondary two, um, and some of you learned it in secondary one, so we know that sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So on the unit circle, look, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, which is y over one. Do you see why it's sine of theta is y, everybody? All right, now let's look at cosine of theta. I go to theta, my cosine is adjacent, which is x over my hypotenuse, which is one. So that's why cosine of theta is x. Making sense? Then tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. So look from theta, I go opposite, then I go adjacent. That's why tangent of theta is always y divided by x. And then their reciprocals work as well. Cos, um, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. All right, now what this does, guys, is in right triangle trig, we are only actually doing all right triangles in quadrant one. So we're creating a bunch of right triangles, but we're only able to do right triangle trig in quadrant one. Now I can draw as many as I want. You get my point here. But what happens if I need to do trigonometry on a, for example, a negative angle? Could we ever have a right triangle with a negative angle? No, so we couldn't use right triangle trig as far as we know with negative angles. So that's what this unit circle does, is it allows us to do trig with negative angles. Now here's why. Can't I now, instead of having a positive angle, can't I draw down and make a right triangle with a negative angle? Yeah, so now I can do trig with negative angles. Does that make sense? Now once again, in quadrant one, which we've done trig before, I, would it be possible to have a 90 degree angle here and another 90? And another side? No, because all three angles in a triangle need to add up to be 180. So you see how right now, trig, we could not do right triangle trig with this. But because of the unit circle, right here is 90 degrees, we now have an x, y point that we can do trig with. Does that make sense? Okay, one more thing to note. If I have a right triangle, could I have an obtuse angle of 120 degrees, for example? No, well, we still have 120 degrees. Trig still exists for 120 degrees but it's not necessarily right triangle traits. Well, it is in a sense, but let me explain. So let's say I drew over to about 120 degrees. Do you see how now that's an obtuse angle? So instead, what the, uh, what the unit circle does is it allows us to drop down and create a right triangle over here and do right triangle trig with that. Now here's why that works. Isn't the x, y point for this obtuse thing going on here the same x, y point for this triangle? So the unit circle allows us to now do trigonometry with all types of angles. Cool stuff. Okay, cool. So now you're not writing this down, you're just looking. So the, right, the unit circle is just showing commonly used angles. Understand, there are a million times, there's a million angles in here. I could draw 15 degrees if I wanted. I could draw 16 degrees. You get my point. I could draw many other angles, but the unit circle only has special angles on it. So there are other angles, it's just they're not on, they're on the unit circle, but they're not special points like these. Does that make sense, everybody? So these, where do these special points come from on the unit circle? Well, I'm going to show you something here. If I trace up an angle theta from starting here up to here and create a 30 degrees right here, I drop straight down. I have a right triangle. Now, do you see how if this is 90, 30, this is a 60 degree angle here. 30, 60, 90 is a special right triangle, correct? All right, now let's erase that for a second. And if I start here, draw up to here at that point, drop down and create a right triangle, I now have a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, which is a special right triangle. And then if I draw this again right here, now this is 60 degrees, 30 and 90. So these, where do these come from? Special right triangles. Does that make sense, everybody? 
So now these x, y points correspond to these x, y values for each of these angles. So where do they come from? Well, mathematically, they do come from somewhere. And I think if I just said to you, memorize this, you might say, well, where do the points come from? Well, you should be asking that. So I'm going to show you mathematically why these points exist. Here we go. You might want to start writing down notes here at this point right here. So we're going to first look at a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. And remember from secondary two, what always happens with these. So everybody, 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, special triangle. If this is 45 degrees and it's across from seven, then if you have another 45 degree angle, the side across has to also be seven. Now, if we went off to the side and found the hypotenuse, we would do 7 squared plus 7 squared equals our hypotenuse squared. So then we would have 98 equals hypotenuse squared. So then we would square root of both sides. So our hypotenuse would be, break that down into 49 times 2, 7 times 7. So we would say it's our hypotenuse must be 7 square roots of 2. So this always works. Here is what always happens with a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. So now let's look at our unit circle here. What do we know? So I might say to you on the test, what are the x, y points for a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle and where do they come from? And this is what you would show. You'd say, okay, well, let's draw a 45, 45, 90 degree angle here. The only thing we know for sure is that this from here to here is a radius and it's one. So we only know right now that this is a one. Does everybody agree? So now what you're going to do is say, well, these two sides are the same some value, x. We don't know right now, right? So our true statement now is x squared plus the other side x squared will equal 1 squared. Well, then we have 2x squared equals 1. So then divide by 2 to solve for x. x squared equals 1 half. Therefore, x must be... Well, let's split this up. X is equal to the square root of 1 over the square root of 2, which isn't that 1 over the square root of 2, which we would need to rationalize our denominator. So we'd multiply by root 2, root 2. Therefore, X equals root 2 over 2. So look at this. X is root 2 over 2. This X must be root 2 over 2. So now look at my unit circle here. We just said that that distance was root 2 over 2. We just said that that distance is root 2 over 2. So wouldn't this x, y point right here be x, y, x, y? There it is. That's where those points come from. Because our hypotenuse is 1, that will always be true. Everybody good? Okay, sweet. So now you don't know. You don't wonder where do those come from. Let's look at the others. 30, 60, 90 degree triangles. This is one I'm not going to get into too, too much detail. It's something that you learned last year, and you're, you're going to want to write down more of this type of thing. So everybody, a couple of things. What, this always happens with 30, 60, 90 special right triangles. So um, if our hypotenuse is some amount, then across from the 30-degree angle, that side will be half of the hypotenuse always. And then the other side, if we went through and did Pythagorean theorem, 30 squared minus 15 squared, and then square rooted it and went through the process, we would find that this third side would be the same as that side, but with a root 3. We're not going to go through the math, but Pythagorean theorem, you could find the other side. Everybody good with that? So this relationship always happens right here with the 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. So now let's put in what we know. You would, If I asked you on a test, you would say, okay, we have this. Oh, I'm going to draw it more kind of how we draw it on the unit circle just so notice right here, I start and I go up to a 30 degree angle. So I have this, like this right now, 30, 60, and then 90. And then what do we only know right now? Our hypotenuse is one. Now across from the smaller angle will be half that amount. So one half. Then across from the other, we could do Pythagorean theorem and figure out this side, but we have this little thing to help us do it quicker. So we would take and multiply one half by root three. So wouldn't that be root three over two? So we just found out that that distance was root three over two, and this distance was one half. That's an x and a y point. Does that make sense of where that came from? 
where these values came from. And then if you think about it, instead, if we went up here and drew a 60 degree, that would just switch these since it's still a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. Does that make sense? Okay, sweet. So now you're not wondering where do those values come from. I'm not going to make you, though, every time redraw the triangle because that takes too long. Too much thinking. Instead, I'm just going to teach you how to memorize filling in the unit circle without having to think. But I thought a lot of you would be interested to know where they came from. Here we go. So watch how nice it, this is to have the unit circle. It makes trig 10 times easier. You don't have to draw a right triangle anymore for these values. So watch. If I said to you, just remember these things, everybody. If I said to you, find the sign at 60 degrees, that means go to 60 degrees, find the sign. Well, sign at 60 degrees is my y value. So my answer would be root 3 over 2. Do you see how easy that made it? So if I said to you, find the cosine at 240 degrees before, before the unit circle, we'd say, well, we, we, don't have, we don't know how to draw a right triangle like that. So luckily, though, we have the unit circle. We locate 240 degrees. Boom, right there. Cosine is x, so my answer is negative 1 half. Pretty easy. Then tangent at negative 30 degrees. Before, we don't know how to draw um, angles with negatives, but now that we have the unit circle, look, well, positive 30 degrees is up there, so negative 30 degrees is right there. Tangent is y over x, so we would have negative 1 half divided by root 3 over 2. So dividing fractions is easy as pi. Now you simplify your answer by flipping the second and multiply. So 2 over root 3, do you see how my 2's divide out? So then we have negative 1 over root 3, which would rationalize to be negative root 3 over 3. Can I rationalize that quick without throwing anybody off too long? Yes? No? Do you want me to go through it? Okay, cool. So we just found using the unit circle those values. So now let's learn how to memorize filling it out. So grab a blank unit circle. Here we go. Let me show you. Really, it's not bad. You're going to be like, whoa, that is easier than I remember thinking it was last year. So first of all, I go in and fill in all my degrees. So this is my first thought process. Let's start here. Isn't this zero degrees or 360 degrees? Now think about it. Halfway around the circle is obviously 180 degrees, correct? Then I would be filling these in, and then we'll, I'll let you keep practicing. Then obviously this is 90 degrees. So think about it. We added 90, add 90, add 90. So we would have, this would be 270 degrees. Okay. Now this is where you should start. You should say, where do these come from? Our special right triangles. So the first one must be at 30 degrees. The next one must be 45. And then up would be 60. Now here is what I would do. Literally, understanding how this works, this distance will be the same distance up from here. So think about it. If this is 30 degrees up, this would be 30 degrees less than that. 180 minus 30. 150. Is everybody with me? You should be saying, okay, this was up 45 degrees from there, so this will be up 45 degrees from there. 180 minus 45 would be 135. And then same thing here. You'd say this is up 60 degrees from here. So this will be subtract 60 degrees, so then that would be 120 degrees. Pretty easy stuff, right? So then right here, you just add 30 degrees. Add 45 degrees. Add 60 degrees. Then right here, you'd say, okay, I've got to be lower by 30 degrees, so minus 30 would be 330. I've got to subtract 45 to get down to here. So then that would be 315. I've got to subtract 60 down to there, so that would be 300 degrees, and we've just filled in the degrees very quickly. Okay, now filling in the radian is harder for people, but I'm going to teach you how do you see it an easy way. So first of all, all you need to do is, first of all, let's fill in quadrant one. Now here is what I would start with. Isn't this two pi, zero radians or two pi radians? Okay, good. And then also let's go to here. This would be pi radians. And then up here would be cutting it into fourths distance would be pi halves. So watch. That distance is one pi half. Then that same distance would be two pi halves. That same amount of distance would be three pi halves. And then look, we end up in the same spot. That same amount of distance would be four pi halves, which is two pi. 
So now filling in quadrant one is the hardest part and then the rest comes really easily. So what I do is I literally go off to the side and say, I'm gonna convert 30 degrees to radians. So don't we convert by multiplying by pi over 180. So now these simplify to be one over six. So everybody write in pi six. Now if you understand what the definition of a radian is, that means the distance of the arc from here to here. Does everybody see it? There's one pi six worth of distance. Now notice the length of that. Let's go about that, let's go that exact same length again, and that would put us at two pi six. Does that make sense? Because that would be two pi six worth of length. So that distance again would be about right there, wouldn't it? One pi six, that distance again would be here. So wouldn't that be two pi six, which is one pi third? Continuing that same distance from there to there, so that was one pi six, two pi six, this will be three pi six, which is pi halves. So then that same distance would be four pi six, which is two pi thirds. Now right here would be five pi six, that same amount of distance again would be six pi six, we're doing good, we're ending up in the right spot. And right here, that same distance would be seven pi six, that same amount of distance, eight pi six, so think about it, four pi thirds. So remember, that was eight pi six. That same amount of distance would be nine pi six, which is three pi halves. Keeping that in mind, that was nine pi six, this would be 10 pi six, five pi thirds. That was 10 pi six, so then right here must be 11 pi six, and then look, ending up in that same distance, 12 pi six, which is two pi. So thinking of distances helps us. Now let's do our next one. I always go off and just, I don't wanna memorize it, convert it. So I say, I'm gonna convert 45 degrees to radians, multiply by pi over 180. Take your calculator, divide those out. We get pi fours. So this one, I remember I used to have such a hard time seeing it. So I'm gonna kind of help you visualize it. So guys, the distance from here to here, look at it, that distance was pi fours worth of distance. Notice it was a big and a little. Do you see what I'm saying? So no, go that same distance, a little and a big, and that would be two pi fours, which is pi halves. We'll go a big and a little, three pi fours worth of distance. Then go a little and a big, four pi fours, we're ending up in the right spot. A big and a little, five pi fours. A little and a big, six pi fours, which is three pi halves. A big and a little, seven pi fours. A little and a big is eight pi fours, we've ended up in the right spot. Does that make sense? Thinking of it in distance, uh, distances is helpful. Is everybody good with this? Yeah. Sweet, awesome, nice, yes. Yeah, well, yeah, so this is a, a zero radian and two pi radian, so we have the same x, y values, right? And then zero degrees and 360 degrees is just writing it in radian versus degrees. Yeah, okay, what I want you to do is flip over and do that from scratch by yourself, not looking at anything again. Before I move on to the outside, how I think through this, because I don't want to have to think about every time and do the math for drawing right triangles. So instead, the first thing you should do is go through and fill in your zeros and ones. So this is over one of zero, over zero of one, over negative one of zero, over zero, negative one. Now from there, this takes some just like memorization, to be honest, but, but I'm gonna help you. Not memorize, like just the next step here. This is what I think of as I go through. So I always start with zero, everybody. So what I do is it's always the square root of that over two every time and then we count up. So watch what I mean by that. We'll think of this as the square root of zero over two, then I'm counting up, the square root of one over two, counting up, the square root of two over two, counting up, square root of three over two, counting up, square root of four over two. What's the square root of four? Two, two over two is one, boom, we're done. So now let's go Let's go backwards, same, same thought process, start at zero, then just count up. Square root of zero over two, square root of one over two, counting up, square root of two over two, counting up again, 
square root of 3 over 2, counting up again. Square root of 4 over 2, which is 2 over 2, which is 1. Okay, now here is one thing I do have to go fix. Square root of 1 is just 1, so you would erase that real quick and say, well, we already know square root of 1 is just 1, so let's just write 1 instead of square root of 1. Now, all you have to do is literally, you guys, literally just stamp those x, y points across there and there. So let's stamp those across. If we stamp that across, these would be the same as these. So write it in. 1 half root 3 over 2. Stamp these over here. Root 2 over 2. Root 2 over 2. These points would stamp over here. Root 3 over 2 and 1 half. We're going to come fill in the negatives later. Picture yourself stamping this down here. So these would be these. 1 half. Root 3 over 2. Root 2 over 2. Stamping root 3 over 2 and then 1 half. And then picture yourself stamping these across over here. So this would be root 3 over 2, 1 half. And then these stamp over here, 1 half, and then root 3 over 2. Now keep in mind, these are literal just x, y points. So look. If I wanted to physically get to that x, y point, I'd have to go positive x distance, positive y distance. To get to that, same thing, positive x, positive y, positive x, positive y. Let's go over to this x value, x, y value. Wouldn't that be negative x but positive y? So I'm going to put negative x. Same over here. We'd have to go back x but still up y. So all my x's will be negative over here. And then to get to this point, we have to go negative x and negative y. Negative, 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 negative. To get to these points, we're going positive x and then negative y. Positive x, negative y. To get right there. So our y's are negative here, and we have now filled in the unit circle. Okay, so watch how we now apply it, and it makes our life so easy. So it says, if theta, if we're looking at angle pi 6, what are these six trig ratios? So this is literally saying this. Find the sine value at pi 6. Does everybody see what I'm saying? So locate pi 6. Remember that sine is your y value. So we get 1 half. Then you'd say, this is saying literally, what's the cosine at pi 6? Well, cosine's x. So it'd be root 3 over 2. Now it says, what's the tangent at pi 6? Locate pi 6. Tangent is y over x. So 1 half divided by root 3 over 2. So flip the second and multiply. So we'd have 2 over root 3, which is 1 over root 3, which is root 3 over 3. Find the cosecant. Do not use the unit circle at this point. Use this because it's going to be easier. The cosecant at pi 6 would be the reciprocal of sine. So it would be 2. Secant would be? 2 over root 3, which would rationalize to be 2 root 3 over 3, right? And then our cotangent would be, look here, it would be 3 over root 3, which would rationalize to be 3 root 3 over 3, which would, which would simplify to be root 3. Okay, sweet. Now watch, there are some times when it's undefined, so look over here. So now we're saying find the sine at 0, so locate 0. So x, y, find the sine of 0. Sine is y, so when we get sine of 0 is equal to 0. Cosine of 0 is equal to tangent of 0 is equal to 0, y, divided by x. Isn't that okay? Yeah, what would we get? 0. Then the cosecant at 0. Look here, cosecant is 1 over 0. Does everybody see why? which is undefined. That cannot happen. There is no cosecant at zero. Then right here, the secant at zero would be one. Our cotangent at zero would be, let's look at tangent, isn't that the same thing, one over zero? Undefined, it can't happen. Everybody good with that? Hey, sweet. So you lunch. So look at this one. If it says negative pi thirds, make sure you say, okay, well, positive pi thirds is up one, two, three points. So down one, two, three. We're actually gonna look at these XY values, right? Okay. Next thing, 
look a little different. It says, what is the sine of negative 15 pi thirds? Well, that's the same thing as saying, what's the sine of negative 5 pi, isn't it? Well, let's not, let's not use negative 5 pi, because instead, let's find the coterminal angle that will fall in the same spot, because then the xy points are the same, right? So instead of looking at negatives, let's add 2 pi, add 2 pi, add 2 pi, and now finally we're positive. So the sine of negative 5 pi will be equal to the sine of pi. So now all you have to do is locate pi, because that would fall where negative 5 pi is. That's the exact same spot. Does everybody get why? We just added a circle, added a circle, added a circle, so we knew where we were at. And then our sine is our y value. So our answer is 0. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, then answer these questions in 5 seconds each. What's the cosine of negative 90? Zero. What's the sign of 225? Yep. Good. Negative root 2 over 2. You're awesome. Okay. Now, if I ask you what's the domain and the range of the sine and cosine, what would you say? Everybody, isn't this ram 0 to positive 1? 0 to negative 1. So what is my domain? Negative 1 to 1. What's my range? Negative 1 to 1. Good. Now, they're going to give you sometimes this formula, and it actually, this formula is what we just used a second ago. I just want to make sense of it. So what they're saying with this formula is sine of theta, which means the y values at theta, will be equal to the sine of theta plus 2 pi n, which means n means the number of times you add 2 pi. So think about why this formula is true. If we said find the sine of 60, wouldn't that be the same as the sine of 60 plus 2 pi? Plus 2 pi again? Plus 2 pi however many times I want? Plus 2 pi n. However, n means however many times you want to add it, the sine will always be the same. Couldn't I also subtract 2 pi? And the sine will be the same. Do you see why the formula makes sense? All good. So use that information. Find cosine, it'll say use these formulas, but we already know we just use the formula. Find cosine of 5 pi. So you would say this. Cosine of 5 pi will be equivalent to cosine. Let's get it on the unit circle. Subtract 2 pi. That's 3 pi. We're not good enough yet. Subtract 2 pi. Wouldn't that put me at pi? So that formula is saying this and this will be equal because they land in the same spot. So our answer is negative 1. Okay, last thing. You're going to want to write this down. Even versus odd functions. We've got to talk about is sine, cosine, and tangent even or odd? So, a couple of reminders. I'm telling you right here, but I'm going to make sense of it because then it's easier to remember and you don't have to really memorize it. So, how we find if a function is even or odd is we do this. If we take a function f of x, we take, and instead of an x, we plug in negative x. We then go through and simplify the function. If we simplify the function and we get back the original f of x, it makes it an even function. Did everybody hear that? We learned that in the very like first one of the very first lessons of the year. So look at why cosine would be considered an even function. So let's look at cosine of positive 60 degrees. Now to find if it's even or odd, we could say, well, let's look at cosine of negative 60 degrees. Let's plug in that negative amount. So cosine of 60 degrees is, let's look, 60 degrees is 1 half. What's the cosine when we plug in negative 60? What do we get? 1 half. Do you see how it's simplified to be the same, making it even? So making it odd would be if we take f of x, we then plug in negative x, and we simplify it out, and it comes out to be negative 1 times the original function. That's what makes it odd. So, oh, I didn't say this. If cosine is even, then obviously the reciprocal secant would be even because 2 would equal 2. So, let's look at sine. Sine of positive 60 is root 3. Nope, yep, root 3 over 2. Now let's plug in a negative and see what happens. Negative 60, which if you look at negative 60, it's 
negative root 3 over 2, which is negative 1 times the original, making it odd. All good. So then think about it. Um, so secant would be odd then. And then tangent, let's see why tangent would be odd. So tangent at 60 degrees would be this divided by this. I'm not even going to do the math. And then at negative 60 degrees, it would be negative that divided by that, which would be opposite the ne uh, negative 1 times the original. So tangent is odd as well. So now we're going to use the fact of cosine being even and sine and tangent being odd to answer these questions. So this is similar to the ones on your homework. So it says if sine of negative t simplifies to be 3 eighths, then what must sine of positive t be? So let's use our information here. We know that sine is odd, correct? Mm -hmm. So if we have sine of negative t was 3 over 8, positive 3 over 8, over 8 what must have been sine of positive t? Mm -hmm. Negative 3 over 8 because it's odd. And this must be negative 1 times the original, which make it positive. Okay, let's do cosecant t. Well, cosecant t is just negative 8 thirds, isn't it? Pretty easy stuff. Okay, um, one more. If the cosine of t is negative 3 fourths, then what happens if we put cosine of negative t? What would our answer be? The same thing, negative 3 fourths, since cosine is even. And then, therefore, secant must be negative 4 thirds. Just flip them. That is the end of, oh, no, it's not. Last thing. Sorry, this is just helping you see how your calculator works. So grab your calculator. So if I said to you, use your calculator to calculate sine of 2 pi thirds. Now understand one thing. If I just said calculate sine of 2 pi thirds, because 2 pi thirds is on the unit circle, you would not be allowed to give me a decimal answer. You are able to give me an exact answer because of the unit circle. But right now I'm just showing you something. Because your input is a radian, your calculator has to be in radian mode. So hit mode, go down to radian. Because you're inputting it in as a radian, your calculator has to be in radian mode, or it will give you an answer. It will just be wrong. So now type in sine of 2 pi thirds, hit enter. It will only give you a decimal, though, 0.866. Now, interestingly enough, if you go to your unit circle and locate sine of 2 pi thirds, you get this. Root 3 over 2. Now, if you type in your calculator, root 3 over 2, you get 0.866, which makes sense. They're equal. It's just the unit circle gives us an exact answer where our calculator can only give us a decimal. Okay, cosecant. This is how you have to type it into your calculator. Cosecant is not on your calculator. So you'd have to type in this. 1 divided by sine of 2 pi thirds. That's how you type it into your calculator. Once again, it's a radian, so I need to be in radian mode. You get the picture. Then moving on, cotangent of 1.5. It doesn't say degrees. This is a radian. It just already has pi multiplied in. So your calculator would need to be in radian mode. So then you would type that in and you would get an answer. Everybody understanding? Okay, let's look over here. This is once again on your unit circle, but I'm just telling you to do it in your calculator. So find the cosine at 30 degrees. Because you're inputting a degree, you need to now go to your calculator's mode and change it to degree mode. And that will give you 0.866, which makes sense because if you go to the unit circle and locate 30 degrees, the cosine would be root 3 over 2, which is good to know. Okay, awesome. And then your calculator, for here you have to type in 1 divided by cosine of 30 degrees. That's just helping you know how to type it into your calculator. That is literally the end. There's the lesson. The rest of the time is yours to plow through as much homework as possible.